Hello and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Gabriel Prada and here is a quick lecture about long ultrasound where we will explain what is a normal long ultrasound exam. Most of long ultrasound is based on the recognition of artifacts, not real images. When lungs are filled mostly with air instead of fluid or consolidated tissue, the ultrasound machine cannot really show as much. Instead, the machine goes crazy and shows things that are not really there, misinterpretations or artifacts which are actually remarkably useful for us. Normal findings in lung ultrasound will indicate that the lungs are either healthy or have diseases such as COPD, asthma, or pulmonary embolism, much like the significance of a normal chest X-ray. Lung ultrasound evaluations are established both positively and negatively, that is, by the presence of some findings combined with the absence of other findings, being both components equally important. A normal or clear long ultrasound evaluation is comprised by the bilateral and homogeneous presence of long sliding, also known as seizure sign, A lines, and curtain sign, plus the absence of B pattern consolidations. Much of these terms will make sense in a few minutes. Don't worry. Long sliding refers to the sliding of the mobile visceral pleura, seen here in green, against the static parietal pleura, seen here in blue. Assuming you have healthy lungs, every time you breathe while your lungs inflate and expand and then deflate and contract, the visceral pleura, which wraps the lungs, will move and slide against the parietal pleura, which is stuck to the chest wall and therefore does not move much. In healthy lungs like yours, I hope, both visceral and parietal pleura are always in close contact with each other, separated by a thin layer of pleural fluid only. Here we have a 2D image of the pleural line with a linear high frequency probe. You already know what we're seeing, right? On each side, we have the ribbed shadows, and on the center, we have the pleural line as a bright horizontal structure. This pleural line is made up of parietal pleura, as we can see in blue, and visceral pleura, as we can see in yellow. And as you breathe, you can see how now the visceral pleura slides back and forth against the static parietal pleura. This is what we call long or plural sliding. Now we see on the right side of the screen another 2D image of the plural line with a linear high frequency probe where there is no long sliding. However, 2D image is not the most reliable modality for evaluation of subtle movements such as long sliding. More often than not, it will be very difficult to tell whether there is or there isn't long sliding only with 2D imaging. That's where the mode comes into play. With end mode, we can better evaluate the presence of long sliding and obtain the seizure sign. Starting with a 2D image of the pleural line, we will place the end mode vector line across and perpendicular to the pleural line so that it displays the chest wall above the pleural line and the lung surface below the pleural line. End mode imaging of a healthy lung in a patient breathing normally is represented by long sliding or the seizure sign in which the static chest wall shows a characteristic pattern of multiple horizontal straight lines, which will be RC, and the long surface will show a granular image appearance, which will be the sand on the beach, and this as a consequence of artifacts generated by the dynamic movement that is the sliding of the long surface, which is mainly the visceral pleura under the fixed chest wall, which will be the parietal pleura. Can you see it now? The seizure sign? All right, all right. I know you're not a radiologist, so let me help your imagination with a real seizure image. Can you see it now? All right. Now let's talk about A-lines. Remember that lung parenchyma is mostly made up of alveolar sacs, which are, in healthy lungs, filled with air. Because air is the number one enemy of ultrasound, we cannot see normal air-filled lung parenchyma. Instead, the ultrasound machine goes crazy and it starts making up stories to explain what it cannot see or understand. Ultrasound machines are not very different from humans after all, right? Let's follow the arrows on the image. While ultrasound waves hit the pleural line and then are reflected back, some will indeed go back to the probe, so we can see the pleural line as a bright horizontal structure on the screen. However, some other ultrasound waves coming back to the probe will be re-reflected back down to the pleural line once they hit the skin. These waves 
will travel back down and will hit the plural line again and will be reflected back, with some indeed going back to the probe, but some others being re-reflected back down again, and so forth. This phenomena is called reverberation. The green arrows represent this, the ultrasound waves reverberating between the skin and the pleura, while the red arrows, those waves that actually come back to the probe and are therefore shown on the ultrasound screen. Because some of these red arrows are the result of reverberation, some will take two or three or even four times longer to come back from the time they're sent out of the probe and the time they come back to the probe. These ultrasound machines, when receiving these reverberated waves coming back later than others, will think, oh, these waves took longer to come back to me. They must have traveled longer and therefore must represent structure further down to the pleura. And that's why long ultrasound is successful. Thanks to the means interpretation of ultrasound machines creating artifacts. Now let's take a look at the image on the right. This is what real A-lines look like. A-lines are nothing but the artificial repetition of the plural line below the plural line. A-lines, however, in order to be legit, must meet the following criteria. They must be horizontal lines, equidistant from each other, and motionless. That is, they do not move much while the patient breathes in and out. What is the clinical significance of A-lines? They indicate the absence of pulmonary edema or consolidations, because if we had pulmonary edema or consolidation, we would never see A-lines. What about B-lines? B-lines are also generated by reverberation phenomena, but we'll talk about the physics of B-lines in the lecture about pulmonary edema. As you can see in the image, B-lines are, in a sense, the opposite to A-lines. B-lines are vertical, laser-like lines, just like lasers in the nightclub. B-lines do not necessarily represent pathology. They may just represent the main or of the major fissures of the lung, or it might be that you're scanning close over the heart and the great vessels. One or two B-lines are just fine, but when you have too many B-lines, we call it B-pattern, which indicates pathology. B-pattern is the presence of three or more B-lines per intercostal space in at least two intercostal spaces. The image on the right has way too many B-lines. This is B-pattern, definitely, and B-pattern, as shown on the left, indicates the presence of pulmonary edema, that is, increasing content of water in lung parenchyma whether it is the alveoli or the interstitium. That is never good for your lungs. That is why the absence of B-pattern is part of the normal lung ultrasound exam. And in case you're wondering, we also have criteria for B-lines. They must be originate from the plural line and travel all the way down to the end of the screen. They must erase any A-lines and must move vigorously with respiration. That is why you don't see any A-lines on the image on the right. B-lines erase a lines. Now let's move on. When you scan over zone 2, that is at the level of the diaphragm between the mid and posterior axillary line, in healthy patients you should see the curtain sign but not pleural effusion or consolidations. Before inspiration or during shallow breaths, we can see the full picture of what you expect if scanning a patient over zone 2, where you can easily identify the diaphragm, the spleen or liver, the kidney, and the shadow representing the healthy lung. To see the curtain sign, you ask the patient to take a deep breath, and while the lung inflates and expands, it covers the diaphragm, liver, spleen, and kidney, like a curtain or a blackout, if you will. Got it? The presence of the curtain sign indicates the absence of pleural effusion or consolidation in the base of the lung. If you have a pleural effusion, no matter how deep the patient inhales, the effusion will always be there between the lung and the diaphragm, separating both, and you will always be able to see it. If you have a consolidation, you would see the consolidation as a bright area, not as a black shadow in the case of a healthy, air-filled lung. No air-filled lung, no black shadow, no black shadow, no curtain sign. Got it? Thank you for watching. Make sure you check out our website and YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share.